We are getting ready to weave the basket. And this is something I just learned recently um, in the last year or so, um, putting on two rows at the same time. What I found many times is that the first row never goes quite the way you want it. Um, it doesn't stay down, it's just very frustrating. So I've learned to do two rows at the same time and I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's not difficult to do. Again, you're gonna to wanna to find the right side or the wrong and right side. And this time you want the right side to be facing out because now that your spokes have upset, you're now working on the outside of your basket. So with the good side of your reed, and because this only has five, you need to have four to be able to finish properly. Because it only has five, I'm gonna start on the first one. I don't often do that because I don't like to come around a corner where I've started, but for this basket, it works well. You're going to lay the reed so that it's gonna be on top of the one you wanna start on. And because I know this is the one I wanna start on, I will go behind the one to the right of it. And then I've got three done already. And I like my alligator clips. They're a little bit smaller when you're working down here at the basket. So I'm gonna put on my alligator clip to hold it in place. And you can see I've got three done already, okay? And then normally it's the same size reed, but this basket calls for just one row of the three eighths and then a row, bunch of rows of quarter inch. So I'm gonna show you that. And I've started here on this first one. The next row is gonna to have to alternate. So I'm gonna to have to start on top of the second one right here. So again, I wanna to go to the one to the right of it, go behind it, and then go right on top of that first one, flush with that first one, I mean the one that you're on, and hold it in place. So you can see I've started to alternate. And then what I have to do is work my reed in opposites. I try to work my spokes and keep them straight. When you get to the corner, you can take it off so you can see the corner. And I'm just alternating. So I can see that the next time I go around, I'm gonna to have to have this one go to the back and this one go to the front. When you get to the corner, give your reed a tiny little, a little bend. Don't make it a definite crease, but do a little bend. And then I know this one has to go behind, so I'm gonna bring it behind. And I'm gonna bring the two pieces back up and close pin them together again. Turn my basket, and here's I'm working on the side. I find it easier that way. Some people use their knees, bigger baskets, that's nice. Turn it to the side. And you can see that I have to pull this around a little bit. And it might not, I might have to fix it later, but I'm gonna work it around here so that it starts to make the corner. And I take the top one behind. And then I have to get kind of the top one out of the way and get the bottom one underneath. So I'm working over and under with opposite ones at the same time, but you can see how I have the alternating power pattern, just like you did when you were kids with paper and doing your little placemats in school or at home. And so you just keep working. The spokes will straighten up later, but this is just to get the first one done. So take the clothespin off the corner. You know, this is the one that has to go behind next. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna take this one behind. And bring those back together. Clothespin them. I'm working. Okay, you can see the alternating. Kind of looks like a hot mess, that's okay. Take off the clothes pin. Work your piece behind the next one that you need. Bring them back up, close pin them. Lay it to the other side and start working that corner. We'll tighten later. corner so take these off and you want to take your alligator clip that's here that's kind of in your way out of the way for that first row especially now because we're right here at the first one and this is why I don't usually like to do it here's where I started so what we're gonna do 
is counting that more, we're gonna count four over. So one, two, three, four. It's actually two overs and two unders. So you wanna end on the second under. So what I do, for this one it's not quite as easy because I'll show you when I go to do the regular weaving. I kind of eyeball it here and cut it off just a little bit so I can kind of just work with a small piece. And you can actually kind of move this out of the way for a bit. Let me kind of go under, kind of pull the corner, over, and here's my other. So it's over, under, over, under. I'm just overlapping where I just went, doing the exact same thing. What it does is it hides it so you can't see where you started or stopped. And since this sticks out a little bit from this, I'm gonna cut it just a hair. So it tucks in behind here, and you can't see the end on that one. Okay, so that's the first row. And here's my second row. I'm gonna bring it around. And here's where I started. So I'm gonna go four. And I can actually not have to cut this one because I can just cut it when I get to here. So it's one, two, three, four. Two overs, two under. So I'm gonna to go to the second one. I overlap one and two, tuck it down in, and then three and four, cut it a hair short of four, and then tuck it into four. Now you can't see where you started or stopped. You'd never know. The only way to know is looking on the inside you'll see a double row here. And that's the only way you'll know. Kind of push things down, but they won't stay there. We'll have to work on the next row to get that. We'll do some adjusting and whatnot when we see what the next row looks like. And that's your first two rows.